Healthy Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Lauren Fitzgerald, and this is episode number one. What? What? Okay, so my co host, Symphony, and I are going to be explaining in this podcast exactly why you should even be listening. Because here's the deal a lot of you know who I am, but many of you guys don't. And so I want to tell you exactly why you should be listening to this podcast, episode one, two, three, and beyond. Um, so, first things first, Symphony, what's up, girl? What's good with you? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Symphony is my voice of reason. We are both <laughs> like minded individuals, but she is much younger than me. You're what? How old? 20, 20, 20, 23 or something 23. like that. And I am 37 and I am proud of my age. And we represent two like minded females who truly desire to design your own life. And there are too many people in this world that are held down by either their health, their fitness, their uh, mindset, their just mediocre state of life. And life is beautiful and it's awesome. And we want to be able to inspire people how to live life by design. And so this particular episode, the whole reason why we are doing episode number one, talking about my story, it's not because I'm a narcissist and I want you to hear my story, but I want you to hear why what I have to say has some, some weight and some legit legitimacy. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> those of you that, that follow me online on social media, know I talk and I've I've been coined talking McTalkerson and then there's Symphony who she's like, <laughs> she's just the same. And so mm -hmm. I, I'm here to tell you that we are, we're going to try and get to the point of each episode. And so the point of this episode today is just for you to hear who I am and why you should be listening to any of the podcasts and any of the things that I have to say. So, um, so Symphony, when you first heard about me, what was your initial thought? Hot damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, you're not hard to look at though. Let's be oh, honest. we're no, not no, talking no. about that though. But the no, person I am. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm such a big lover of, of your work and what you do. And I love that I've been able to see and know you personally and know your true passion behind all of this. Cause it's, I mean, it's such a big empire that you've built for yourself through passion. And so the first time I came across you, you know the story. Um, I was helping somebody with her emails and you had emailed her and I looked at it and was like, <gasps> I told her, I was like, you have to come, come look at this right now. And the woman that she was emailing was actually my mentor who is now also your mentor. So, and, and I found her listening to a podcast. Right. So I've always been impressed with you. And I mean, you, you have such a good head on your shoulders and well, so much you. to share. So thank you. you know, so happy to be a part of this. Well, you're probably going to hear a lot of, of the story of my life that you haven't heard yet. And, and that's, I, I know a lot of people that follow me online, um, know bits and pieces of it, but mm -hmm. don't quite understand my entire story. And so yeah. anytime that I talk, whether it's on live broadcast or now on podcast, I don't want to waste your time. I want to to make sure that people walk away with something, whether they've been inspired, whether they get information, knowledge that gives them potential power, which I always talk about on my Facebook lives. Um, and, and the reason why I want you to hear my story is to walk away saying, okay, this life that I'm living that's mediocre doesn't have to be this way. And here is one person that took a life of mediocrity and is living life by design. And so I'm, I'm gonna title this podcast from dancer to doctor to doer. Ooh, it's got a nice little ring to it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so a lot of people, well, here's the deal. When people see that, they're going to assume that I was a dancer and not a dancer. <laughs> oh, I hated that. When I, when, anytime I would tell people that I was a dancer, they'd be like, <laughs> what kind of dancer? Get your mind out of the gutter, yo. How are you? <laughs> Right? No, I, my parents put me in a dance studio when I was three years old and that was my passion. And I, I was, I was lucky to have parents that supported me and, and helped me find what I'm passionate about in life. And I was so passionate about dance. I mean, I did tap and ballet for the first, I don't know, 
eight years until I was about eight or nine. And then we moved to the big city of Waco, Texas. Waco, what's up? <laughs> I know a lot of you guys watch the the show with, um, oh, what's it? The HGTV show, uh, Chip and Joanna. Yeah, Chip and Joanna, the fixer upper. That's my yeah. hometown, yo. And we are no longer <laughs> no, known for David Koresh. Thank God. But, <laughs> but I, I moved to the big city of Waco, Texas, and, and I found this dance studio in which this was the first time that I ever had people that, m- minus my parents, obviously, I look up to my parents, and that's just always a, a given. I'm blessed with having great parents. Um, but I definitely think that people need more than just um, one or two good people to look up to. Cause a lot of people aren't blessed with good parents. We can't pick our parents. We can't pick our family. I'm blessed with that. But I, I'm the person that I am today because of different people in my life. And so in the dance studio was the first time that I had mentors in my life that really saw something in me and, and helped me bring it out. And, and, you know, that's as a coach, that's what I do. I help people see something in them that they, they don't see themselves. And, um, and so, so I thought, don't make fun of me, but I thought that after high school, I was going to move to New York or LA. I really wanted to be a backup dancer for Janet Jackson. Mm-hmm. And did I believe that I could? Absolutely. And why do I ask that? Or why do I say that? Because I believed that because the people in my life believed in me. And so I didn't even think twice about it. Like saying it now as an adult, if I would have heard that from a, a, a 11 year old female who has skill. I I, obviously, I mean, I could dance, but I would have laughed at, I'm not to their face. I wouldn't have laughed at them to their face, (laughs) but I, I would have, I I would have been like, wow, all right, you're confident. And you know, that's one of the things that we are going to talk about in the fits and healthy podcast is learning how confidence and, and to, to love yourself. And because so much of it comes from that. And there are so many people that were not raised in a loving environment where they learned to love themselves and to believe in themselves. And so at, I believe it was 12 years old. Um, we had a, a woman who owned this theater come and basically recruit dancers from my dance studio. Now I, I, I got moved to the senior company (laughs) when I was, um, young. And so I was 11, 12 years old dancing with girls that were 17 and 18 years old. And, um, three of the girls were recruited to go dance at this, this theater for the summer. And the, the person wanted me to, and of course my mom, she's a great mom. She didn't let me. And I was, I was so angry. I was so devastated because this was going to be, you know, like the beginning of my professional dancing career. And I mean, I still remember where I was in my bed when I was having this discussion with my mom. And this, this is one of those, those critical moments in your life where you look back and you're like, all right, I, I, I believe everything happens for a reason, good and bad. And this was such a devastating conversation. Um, but it was so crucial to the path in which I went on. And so, um, I've always, always been smart in school. Like I didn't really have to try to make all A's in, in, you know, up until I got to college. And then I went to UT Austin and I'm surrounded by all these really genius people and I had to start trying then. But up until I went to college, I, it wasn't hard for me to, to be top of the class. And I was always in the, the AP classes and whatnot. And, um, and so my mom had this conversation with me, seventh grade, Lauren, God has blessed you with many talents. And there's no doubt that dance is one of them, but God's going to use you in a much bigger way. If you use your brain and you'll be able to use that much longer. Like you could be a dancing doctor. Like literally she said that <laughs> you can be a dancing doctor. I'm like, whatever mom. Cause you what know, mom doesn't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, when you're, when you're a teenager, you're like, your mom doesn't know anything. Right. Yeah, and right. Right. <laughs> and uh, I have actually been a parent of a teenager, which we'll talk about that shortly. But, mm-hmm. um, but the, the fact is that it was devastating to me. And I, I, um, I changed paths at that point in time. I, I really did start to change my thought process of what am I going to do? Cause I, I always just assume I was going to go to college, but then the whole dance thing, I, I didn't know how that was going to fit. And of course, when you're junior high, you, you, shouldn't know how that's going to fit. But, um, but when I was about 14, 15 years old, it was my freshman year in in high school. Um, my aunt Cheryl, she was going through PA school. She was becoming a physician's assistant. And I happened to be in biology at that time. And I was like, ah, this is cool. 
I like, I, I can use my brains and I can be a doctor because that's pretty cool. And you're, I'm going to make a lot of money and I'm going to make my dad proud. And I'm going to be, I'm, you know, all of these things that I look back and I wish that I would have had a mentor telling me, oh. but these things are not important. Right. Yeah. And, and honestly, I don't regret any, any decision that I've made because I'm, I'm here for a reason and my life experience, but the point of, of this podcast is I want the two of us to show people out there that be mentors and be, be the voice of reason to someone who is maybe in a relationship in which they think this is, this is all I'm ever going to have. And I'm just going to have to put up with this because I would rather take this either physical or mental abuse the rest of my life than be alone. And, mm -hmm. and, and if I, if my voice is the one voice that that actually captures that, that heart that yeah. says, you know what? She's right. Life is short and I don't have to live this way. Or maybe you have a really high paying job, like an anesthesiologist, but this is not going to bring you happiness the rest of your life. Yeah. Be the voice of reason that says, Hey, you know what? There's no reason why you can't follow your heart. So, so I go to college and I decide I'm going to be a doctor. Now, for those of you that don't know, I'm an anesthesiologist. I haven't practiced medicine in I, going on 16 or 17 months now. Um, I decided to give up medicine because I realized that my true passion is to help people in a different way. Because while my choice to go to medical school did have a lot to do and I want to help people, the other reasons were not what the, there's superficial reasons. They were reasons that I realize now as a 37 year old female that, you know what, it, those things don't matter. Yeah. So I went to college. I went to UT Austin what, what? <laughs> Hook <my> horns. and, <laughs> and I started the, the, the journey. And I knew that that journey was going to be a long journey. And I stopped doing what I was passionate about. I stopped dancing. Um, I just focused on school because like I said, when I went to UT, <laughs> y'all, I'd never freaking made a B. Okay. And my first semester at UT Austin, I took a calculus class, but I took it with the engineer people. So there's different calculus. Yeah, it didn't end up good. I made a D. I'd never even made a B before and I made a D and I was really happy that it wasn't an F. Like it was, uh, so, so that was kind of my wake up call sure. of I've got to focus. And if I want to do this doctor thing, I can't, I have to give up everything else in my life. Now, in the meantime, I have always been into fitness. Okay. I started teaching dance at my dance studio when I was like 11 or 12. I, you know, I taught the little three and four year olds. And then as I got older, I would teach the older age uh, kids in the dance studio. I taught aerobics. I taught some step aerobics, some high low, and uh, I think I had an abs class too. Um, so I've, I've always been into fitness. I was one of those few teenagers in the gym that was actually lifting weights at an early age. So fitness and exercise has always been something that I've been passionate about. Yeah. Um, but like so many of us, I would say majority of us, I was duped into believing, um, certain, certain concepts of food and nutrition that are, are not true. And they're, they're based on, so we're still battling this wave of low fat, fat free is the way to go. And I did oh, that. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> How many freaking, okay. Are you, are you too young to know what snack wells is? Yes, you are. I can see that. <laughs> hey, this is why this is why I have you as my co-host because you're the millennial. <laughs> Teach me. Yeah. So Snackwells was one of the first um, snacking brands that really tuned into the fat-free, low-fat stuff. Mm. And and my mom. Okay, my mom is a nutrition major, right? She and of course she was taught all of the crap that everyone else was that was just yeah. not right. Um, right. But but she she would buy these fat free snacks. And, and I remember as a teenager, literally getting home and snacking, like you're only supposed to have, you know, because they're low, low fat and low calorie. So, you know, you're supposed to have, but little did we know at the time, those, all of those processed foods yeah. signal our brain to want more. So mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many boxes of snack wells I opened and finished the whole box. <laughs> yeah. 
So any, anyone that is my age remembers, cause I mean, now the, you know, the brands that are fat free, low fat are a dime a dozen. They're like every single brand. Yeah, right. Sure. Cause, but snack wills was one of the first. Yeah. And, and so all, all of my peeps that are, are my age, I'm sure you remember the, the fat free snack wells. I don't even remember cause my mom bought so many of them. There was one that was like this chocolate cookie that had, that was like soft. It was almost like a macaroon. Oh, so good. <laughs> But I would eat the whole freaking box because it was only a hundred calories. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> Times 10. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> if I would have only known back then what I know now. Sure. Um, but that's the whole reason why we're doing this podcast because yeah. there, there are so many little pieces of knowledge that are commonplace to you and me, just because we are in the same industry of health and fitness that are not commonplace to a lot of people. Like for instance, aspartame guys. Oh yeah. Don't get me started. And we will probably have a podcast that is just talking about artificial sweeteners, yeah. but aspartame is the sweetener in a lot of diet sodas. And yeah. Symphony, I know, you know, this, but this is for the listener that doesn't, um, diet Coke, diet, Dr. Pepper, diet, whatever. If you look at the ingredients, it has aspartame in it. And there are some that are starting to pick up on the fact that people are starting to get educated about looking, but you guys, mm -hmm. if you knew that aspartame was given to cows three weeks before slaughter because the farmers know that it fattens them up. Why in the heck would you even drink diet soda that has the same ingredient? Yeah. Like for real. And, and this is, this is the reason why the life experience has led up to now and this podcast, because if you don't know, you don't know, but this is of course, you, cause you and I both, I mean, we listen to podcasts, audiobooks all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, this is where a lot, I gain a lot of information and a lot of knowledge, Yeah. but also you've got to know that you, you have to be discerning and who you listen to. And, mm -hmm. and because there's a lot of people that just like, for instance, I'm going to get on a soapbox real fast. <laughs> the, the, the bro science, and I, I'm not picking on just male fitness, personal trainers, whatnot that are in the gym because it's females too, but you perpetuate this misbelief that you have to eat five and, and six meals a day and, and breakfast is the most important meal and, and blah, blah, blah. Like that's liquid protein. So much oh, protein. God. Yes. <laughs> I, I just, I just did a snap just two days ago. Go to, go to, and I, I, I probably shouldn't start naming brands because I probably have to think about that now that we're doing a podcast, but go to any nutrition store. I won't mm -hmm. say, I mean, we all know <laughs> one of the most popular ones, but you can get, you know, nutrition products at any major store, right? Mm -hmm. Go to them, read the ingredients and look, uh, it's a great rule. If you can't pronounce the ingredient, it's probably not good for you. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, okay. So I digress. So <laughs> <laughs> so my, my whole 12 year process, I go to college at UT for four years. I'm in Austin, love Austin. Um, I, 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 I decide that I'm going to do a study abroad because I didn't know if I was going to get into medical school the first time around. And so I, I spent the last six months of college in Spain and I lived in Valencia, Spain, which is about, um, two or three hours South of Barcelona. Um, it was such an amazing experience. I saved, I, I saved all my money because my parents were not parents that just gave me money to do whatever. So, um, so I, Oh God, I look back, I turned 21, literally the month that I moved to Spain. And, um, I, I traveled all throughout Europe by myself as a 21 year old. I, I literally, and I, I think about my, my stepdaughter, my ex stepdaughter, but I'm going to call her my stepdaughter, Hannah. Yeah. She's 20. And like the idea of her traveling all throughout Europe by herself just makes me, you know, <laughs> but, but it, it goes to my life experience. This is when I started really falling in love with other cultures and, and, and travel because growing up in small town, Texas, um, where pretty much everyone's white and Baptist. Mm -hmm. Um, I, going to UT Austin was an eye opener. And that's when I first realized, like, I love experiencing different cultures, different ethnicities yeah. and getting to have friends from all different beliefs, colors, whatever. Um, but traveling the world definitely uh, opens that passion up even more. Yeah. So, so in Spain, I'm there for six months and I get into med school the first time around. I don't know how, because I will tell you, 
that my MCAT scores were not great. They were average. Like literally the average was right here and that's where I was. And I, I got in on my, my sheer personality. <laughs> no, but, but the interview, the interview process is, um, if you can get an interview, mm. I, I always said, if I can just get an interview, I can get in because I can talk. Mm. And, and most of you guys know that, um, the stereotypical physician does not have a great personality. Sure. Can I get an amen? <laughs> yeah. Amen on a Friday. Yeah. <laughs> amen. <laughs> and, and, you know, that's Cynthia, that's you're, you're going to be a voice for the, the, per, the non-medical person when sure. we do episodes that we talk about medical stuff. And I always yeah. try, I, I, I never want to be that stereotypical doctor that, um, talks above patients and, mm -hmm. and talks medical jargon. I like to, to make it where they understand. Cause ultimately if you don't understand your own health. You don't have the, the power to change. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, so in my twenties, um, I'm going through college med school residency. Y'all that's 12 years, 12 years. Okay. Residency is the step after college, after med school. So I officially had my MD. So I was officially Dr. Lauren Fitzgerald in 2005, but I wasn't practicing medicine on my own because I didn't have a specialty. There are some people that literally just do an internship and then go practice general medicine. Um, but I had to do an internship and followed by three years of anesthesiology residency. And most nowadays, the way medicine is most practicing physicians, whether no matter what their specialty is, that's what they have to do. Yeah. So I choose anesthesia because at, at one point I did realize that, okay, I don't like the clinic. I like being in the operating room, but I saw the surgeons and I saw their lifestyle and I'm like, oh, no, 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 mm -mm. That, that's not, I don't want to be a slave like so many surgeons are. Right. Yeah. Um, but I didn't do what I, I hope that we can inspire other people to start doing is having mentors in your life that yes. will speak truth into you. Yes. Shout because out to Melissa. Our amen. <laughs> amen. For real. And, yeah. and you know, so that's when, when someone asks me to speak to their daughter or their son, or, you know, I, I speak more to just females, but, um, but <laughs> when I, I, I take that, I take that very serious because there, there are so few good mentors that are positive, um, role models and examples for other people. Mm -hmm. And, and ultimately that's what I want us to represent on this fits and healthy podcast Absolutely. is two females that can encourage not just the female population, but males, females, young people, old people to take control over every aspect of their life so that they can live their life to the fullest. Yeah. So <laughs> we have both learned to add value to our lives in different ways because we both have lived different lives, but we both have really learned how to add value to our lives. And that's our biggest goal here in this podcast is to be able to teach you how to add value in your life in whatever Amen. walk of life you are. You Amen. don't have to be a female. You don't have to be into fitness. You don't have to be a doctor or nutritionist. I mean, that's the point is Amen. Strokes for different folks, but we want to help you add value to whatever it is that you want to design in your life. Amen, sister. Preach, mm -hmm. preach. Mm. Amen on a Friday, <laughs> like you said. So, so dance was not in my life for a long time. I found a dance fitness class called Latin Fusion in San Antonio, Texas, because that's where I was for eight eight years for med school and residency um, at the University of Texas there in San Antonio. And um, this is where I realized that, you know, and what I was like twenty eight at the time. Now, mind you, every perspective, it's all perspective. <laughs> when I was a teenager, I used to think that 28, 29 sounded so old. And I, I say that specifically because there was a chick that took class. Her name was Lisa Gonzalez. I don't know where the heck she is today, <laughs> but I remember she was 20. Yeah. She was 29 years old. And I used to think, why is this old chick always taking class? <laughs> Dude, like <laughs> I just, I look back, I'm like, oh, she wasn't old and she was so smart. <laughs> Um, so, but I, I grew up with the mentality that, you know, you're, once you're past a certain age, you, you can't dance and, and, yeah. and that's some BS. Yeah. So, so I found this, this dance, dance fitness class and, you know, a lot of people know Zumba, uh, but there are so many different dance fitness formats and the dancer in me all of a sudden was released and I'm like, Oh, this is, <laughs> this is what has Yes. Yes. Because I've, 
I love exercise, but having that aspect, it was just, it was freeing. And so I found this class and I, I took it at Lifetime Fitness in San Antonio for like a year. And then this is when everything changed and Japan came in. And so a lot of the people who subscribe to my YouTube channel have followed me from the Japanese days. And yeah. now I'm not, obviously I'm not Japanese, but <laughs> my YouTube channel, yeah, my YouTube channel actually started in Japan. Um, my now ex-husband, he was military and we both, we were both physicians. Um, he is an orthopedic surgeon and we both finished residency the same year in 2009 and we were not married. So I, he wasn't my husband at the time, but once the air force said, um, they're moving him to, to Japan, I'm like, I was literally faced with, okay, you either break up or you get married. Yeah. Now I'm not here to tell you that's a good reason to get married. Sure. But it happens all the time in the military. It does. Oh, a lot. Yeah. Very, it's very common. Yes. So, so I, that's why I married my ex-husband. Um, and I don't regret it. He's a good man. And, um, and we'll, we'll talk about relationships and that kind of stuff on a later podcast. But, um, but I decided to marry him. Literally, we went to the courthouse one Friday morning after we were both on call. We were both in scrubs. It was the most non-romantic thing you've ever seen. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was ridiculous. So we, we, we got married on a Friday morning and literally, uh, seven months later, we're moving to Japan. And so Japan, um, had one good dance fitness class. And I had already realized that that dance fitness class was my, my mental therapy. And yes, it gave me good exercise, but it's so much more than that. And anyone that, I mean, if you're on the YouTube channel, you, you obviously know that I love dance and you probably love dance too, whether you're a fitness instructor or not. Um, but it was my therapy. And when I realized that there was only one good class, I'm like, dude, I can teach this Yeah, and I can do my own thing and I can have control. Right. <laughs> so, so I, I talked to the, the head of the, um, Potter fitness in Misawa, Japan. What, what? Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I, I started a, a dance fitness class. I called it hip hop. I taught for free for almost two years at Potter Fitness Dang. because I loved it. And because yeah. I wanted, I wanted control over the, what the class was and, and <laughs> I, I get bored very easily. So I was always coming up with choreography and, and this is, this is where I met our producer, Robert, um, met him the, what the second year he, he and his wife were stationed there and, um, he started taking my class. I'm like, who is this dude? I mean, he was killing it. His energy was awesome. And I, you know, this was, he was one of the many relationships that formed in this, this community. Yeah. And I have since learned from that. That was what 2000, I started teaching essentially January, 2010. I've since learned that community is everything. It doesn't have to be dance fitness. Amen. If, if you don't have a community, you're, well, you're missing out on life. Yeah. And, and we hope it, we can bring it to you through this. Yes, this yes. is now your community. If you don't Amen. have one, we're adopting you now. Amen. <laughs> yes. Yes. Welcome um, home. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a healthy community. We, we hey. love you. And, and it's a judge free zone. And, and that's, you know, that's one thing that, um, I don't, I think it was when I first moved to Oklahoma where I started doing videos more than just the dance fitness videos. So, yeah. so the whole reason that I even started the YouTube channel was because my time in Japan was, was small. Um, mm -hmm. it was from 2009 to 2012. And cause that's typical when, when military people are stationed overseas, it's usually yeah. a, a three to four year tour. So I knew that I was, I was going to be, you know, not there for long. And I had all of these songs that I'd choreographed and all of these people that I was leaving behind. And I was like, you know what, let's just record it. And so literally, you know, and Robert was one of them. <clears throat> it was all voluntary. And it's, any of the videos that have ever been on, on my YouTube channel have always been people that volunteer their time yeah. and, and, you know, want to help out. And I'm grateful for every single person that's ever been in any of my videos. Cause you guys are what make it fun because you guys are the ones that make everyone realize that, it doesn't matter who you are, how big you are, how small you are, what color you are, how healthy you are, how, what kind of dancer you are. Anyone can do this. And the, the feeling that you get just after dancing is just, ah, and then you yeah, have a community. community. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so, so I, I started filming these, these videos and 
before you know it, I'm here in Oklahoma. No, well, I'm not in Oklahoma right now. I'm in California right now, but here in the States. And I have, <clears throat> I think there were 43 videos that in a matter of three months that um, my class peeps in Japan Dang. and I recorded. And I mean, the, the quality, oh, it's terrible. Like if you go look at the old videos, <laughs> oh, shake my head. Double beginnings oh, though. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, literally I, uh, yeah, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> I, I'm just glad that I have Robert in my life because he is good at that kind of stuff. And he's like, <laughs> I make videos and everything. Made awesome. All of this happened. Yes, exactly. So, so I, I get to Oklahoma and, um, I find, I do my research. I find a great studio where the, I, I, I see two of the instructors. So I'm like, okay, I could totally take class from them. Yeah. It's called co-motion. And a lot of people remember co-motion days. Um, cause that's, that was the first place that I ever taught in Oklahoma. And, um, and I'm sitting there waiting to take a class and this chick who now is one of my good friends, Andy, um, she looked at me and she's like, do you have a YouTube channel? Now, mind you, remember, I have zero desire to be known or discovered on YouTube. I literally did this because I knew that all of the people that I was leaving behind wanted to keep dancing with me and yeah. they were going to be stationed all over the world. And any, anywhere you're stationed, you can get YouTube minus Germany, Germany, the, the music laws are killing me. No. <laughs> they would, uh, my videos always get blocked in Germany. It's sad. No. Um, but, but I, I had zero desire because I had this amazing job in which I made a lot of money. I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. A anesthesiologists, they make good money, but yeah. there's something that comes along with that. Yeah. You sacrifice a lot, a lot. And a, a lot of people don't realize it. So, so I'm like, maybe I, yeah, I, I do. And, and <laughs> I, I realized that was the first moment. That was another crucial moment for me. Like the power of social media, Oh, you yeah. know? Yeah. I had just moved from literally the other side of the planet mm -hmm. and this chick looks at me and is like, wait, do you have a YouTube channel? <laughs> Maybe it was scream the, the usher song. I, I, I doubt. Do you remember that song? It's a great song. Mm -hmm. That was my first viral video. And I don't really know what the definition of viral is, but <laughs> no, I know in the first, first week of uploading, it had like 40,000 views. And, and that was, at the time, that was pretty cool. I mean, that's not bad. No, it's not, not bad. It's not for somebody bad. who is not trying to be YouTube famous. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. And, and man, here's the deal. There are so many people. So a lot of, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and be PC. I don't, I'm not PC a lot, but I'm going to be PC right now. A lot of um, different formats of, um, especially dance fitness, mm. um, they certify you and then they really don't put a lot of effort into making sure that the, the quality of stuff you get to teach your class is awesome. Yeah. So what happens is there are a lot of fitness instructors that love dance fitness and what they're given from whatever certification they have yeah. is crap. So they go look online and they go look on YouTube. And so that is where a lot of people were, were finding me was mm -hmm. people that are instructors that are like, okay, this thing, this DVD that I was given last month sucks. So, but I, I want to do something that's awesome for my class. So I'm going to go to yeah. YouTube. So that's how they found me. And, um, and in the meantime, there's a ton of people that have found this YouTube channel that either can't afford a gym, um, don't have the confidence to go to a gym or aren't anywhere that's, that's close to a gym that has any kind of community, like a dance fitness class. Yeah. So, so in the meantime, the YouTube channel, keeps growing because it offers all of this, right? Yeah. Now I'm in Japan. No, I'm, I, no, I'm in, I'm at Mercy Hospital and, uh, <laughs> someone, so that was my first job in Oklahoma. Um, and someone made the comment, they're like, um, why have you ever thought about just doing that full time? And I thought, I'm like, if I could do health and fitness full time and make the same kind of money, mm -hmm. I would give up anesthesia and heartbeat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye Felicia. <laughs> bye Felicia. Because a lot of people don't realize everything that goes into practicing medicine. Um, mm -hmm. what most people think is that you, you make big bucks and you get this title that everyone, you know, looks up Everybody's to or whatever the glory in it, yeah. but not everything that goes on behind scenes. Yes. A lot. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I, 
I didn't think it was possible. And so I keep practicing medicine, but I keep observing the people that are in the OR with me, the surgeons, the anesthesiologists, the OR techs, the OR nurses, and so many of them are not happy. Mm -hmm. And, and there's a reason the lifestyle sucks, uh, yeah. being on call, having to get up at 2am to go do an emergent X lap or an emergent C-section or whatever. Yeah. Um, it, it, it goes against everything that's natural with your body. And in the meantime, this whole time that I think that I'm being healthy because I'm a doctor and I teach fitness classes. Yeah. My, my physical health, I I'm pudgy and I'm not here to tell you that, that I've, I've never been defined. I've never defined myself by my weight. Um, yeah. actually I, I don't really get on the scale. I know when my clothes fit tight, I need to, to, mm -hmm. you know, yes. buckle up and, and, you know, focus. But I, I think the scale just does bad things to our head, but, yeah. but this whole time I never stop exercising, whether it's teaching my classes. Mm -hmm. I, I usually have always taught my classes and done other things, whether it be weight training or taking other classes or whatever, but every year it would just get a little bit worse. Mm -hmm. And, and that was when I started realizing that, man, the food that, that I'm eating, that I'm telling my patients to eat, I'm eating myself, low fat, fat free. Um, it's, it's not working. And, yeah. and I've got all of these other symptoms that uh, are, are not normal for someone who should be otherwise healthy. I exercise and I eat right. Right. On paper, you should be a hundred percent healthy, but it, it, you know, in your lifestyle, it says otherwise. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and to this day, there's so many doctors that still prescribe that lifestyle. And, yeah. and that's my mission is to, to get people to question. I did a live broadcast just the other night. There is a particular drink that nephrologists give their kidney patients that have kidney failure. Mm -hmm. And, and, someone gave me, did a screenshot of the ingredients. And I literally uh, just like vomited in my mouth because yeah. the second ingredient is corn syrup, like mm -hmm. a diabetic, a type one diabetic who has no kidneys and you're giving them these products that are just terrible. Yeah. And, and I, as a physician, when I was in ICU taking care of renal patients, I would prescribe that same nutrition. And I, so, <sighs> I so want to empower people to start taking control of their own life yeah. and, and through, through education and through exercise and through doing your own research. Yes. Yes. Uh, the, the potential knowledge is, is, is your potential power. The knowledge is your potential power. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's so many people that follow me on Facebook and that have no idea the podcast world and, and we're going to pop their podcast cherries on this. Yes. Mm -hmm. we need shirts that say exactly. That. <laughs> exactly. But, but I, in practicing medicine, I had the, the slap in my face every day that I've got all of these unhealthy patients and I couldn't help, but every single patient that I put to sleep, whether they be in Japan or in Oklahoma, um, they have this laundry list of stuff. And literally every time I would think, man, if only I could have gotten to you yeah. years ago, yeah, you wouldn't be in this position. And there's the, obviously there's some surgeries that it's emergent and it doesn't matter if sure. you've had the healthiest lifestyle ever. Um, and I I'm grateful for the people that, that choose to practice medicine and, and sacrifice, but absolutely. But I, I just realized that I can help so many more people change everything and prevent becoming a patient on my OR table yes, by creative. exactly by, by using this format. And so, yeah. um, so the, along the dance fitness aspect and the, the health and fitness coaching, this is something that I, I never thought that I would give up medicine for, mm -hmm. but I, I gave up medicine because that is how I'm going to put an impact on this world and help, help educate and empower people to, to take control of their own lives. And, yeah. and so, so yes, I I'm a medical doctor, but so much of my knowledge has come from me extending my education past med school. Yeah. And, you know, to, I, I graduated from med school in 2005 and, um, I, I have learned as much or more since I've graduated, mm -hmm. but there's so many, so many doctors that all you, we always have to, so it's called CMEs continuing med medical education. You have yeah. to continue that 
but most people just keep in their specialty and do what they can to keep their just their the license. bare minimum to keep their license. Active. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, I mean, there are still so many doctors that truly believe that low fat and low cholesterol is, is what a cardiac patient should have. And, and I'm here to tell you it's not. Yeah. And obviously no one can, uh, I'm not a medical doctor for anyone listening to this. And, and, you know, yeah. obviously you have to go see your own doctor and they have to be able to lay hands on you. Not really. I'm, yes. Lay hands on you. Physical exam. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you hear lay hands, you think of something else. And that's not what I, <laughs> your doctor should not be slapping around. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if they do, that's kind of weird. And I'm, <laughs> but, but, they but everything you hear here is medical advice, not medical prescription. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's not your physician. You're Absolutely. PCP, not exactly. But she has knowledge and knows stuff about stuff to share with you. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and most people don't realize that, um, in med school, there is not a nutrition class. Yeah, and, um, and crazy. That it's, absolutely. My mind. it's absolutely crazy. Like it's uh, little tidbits of, of nutritional information are thrown in to some of our basics, like physiology. The first two years are just, you're just in the classroom and you're not doing any clinicals. So third year, yeah. fourth year, when you're actually in clinicals, but you're learning some basics and, and that's, I mean, there's no, it's just, it's sad. And, but when I learned that so much of the financial backing of medical schools is from big pharmaceutical companies. Oh my gosh, yes. Doesn't that make you sick? I could talk about this forever. Oh yeah. And we will, we will, but, but that's the thing. I, you know, so many of these big pharmaceutical companies, um, they, they want you to believe and they start from the doctor because the, the person like you who doesn't have their MD is going to trust me who has my MD. And if I don't know that, Hey, your acid reflux, actually, you don't need to be on this little purple pill the rest of your life. We can actually change around what you're eating. And those symptoms are going to go away. They don't want the doctors to know that. And, and so literally medicine is not a huge hit because no. it does not pay the pharmaceutical companies anything. So Absolutely. it's very, very hush, hush swept under the rug. Yep. Yeah. And, and big food companies. I mean, big mm -hmm. food company there, there's not a lot to be made in me telling my patient that to not go buy all of this processed food and, and the stuff that could literally sit on the shelf for years. Yeah. I mean, I, I had one person on, on my um, live broadcast just the other day. It was great. She was like, I, I taught my son why this is unhealthy because I went and bought, I think, I don't know which fast food chain she, she bought, but she bought a burger and it sat there and it didn't change Yes. for like a year. Yeah. And, and, and for people, and like, she, she also said that she put a tooth inside of um, a Coke, a soda and it ate it away. And like that visual being seen by someone's like, Oh, I should probably not put that in my yeah. body then. Right. Yeah. Yep. But, um, but the, the whole point in the fits and healthy podcast, we are going to be talking about, man, uh, we'll be talking about fitness. Obviously we'll be mm -hmm. talking about nutrition. Nutrition is one of the things that I really want to empower other people about. Yeah. Um, we're going to be talking about how to overcome the mindset that holds people back, not just in their health and fitness, but in their personal lives in their, their professional lives and, um, every aspect of life. Mm -hmm. um, Just the limiting, debilitating mindset in a whole, all encompassing. Yes. Yes. I, I want on this, this podcast, I want to start challenging people to question the norm. I want them to yeah. start thinking that, um, why, why do I not believe that I can accomplish this goal? Mm -hmm. Um, what are these excuses that I keep subconsciously telling myself that's holding me back from, Maybe, you know, because, uh, because I, I do health and fitness coaching, a, a huge thing that I see um, in my customers are this mindset of truly not believing in yourself. And like, this is yeah. just going to be another diet and I'm going to yeah. fail at it because I failed at every other and, and changing that mindset to being, okay, I can do this. And that's where it starts. And that's why, you know, I, I love to get to, to people that are thinking about, surgeries, bariatric surgeries, like gastric bypass, mm -hmm. because that surgery has changed 
a lot of people's lives, but yes, there are absolutely. a large majority of people that don't speak up that initially had weight loss and then went back. And now they have the same weight problem. Yes. And then they have all the complications that come along with bariatric surgery. But this is not something that people talk about one, because yeah. the surgeons that's cash money for them. Yes. Two, the people that it didn't work for feel ashamed yeah. and, and don't yeah. talk about it and don't talk about all of the things, the, the regret that they wish that they wouldn't have done this and, yes. and the, the vitamin deficiencies and, and all of these kind of things that the normal person doesn't think about. I, I want to challenge everyone to just start thinking on your own and yeah. regaining power of your life. Because I've, I've just being in medicine, I, you might have heard me tell this story before, Symphony. Um, there was one day I, I was at, at the OR in, um, at Mercy and I was in the, I want to say the, the gynecology OR all day. Mm -hmm. And I was working with this one scrub tech and I'd never really worked with her before, but she and I were in the same OR all day. She was about my age. Um, she was a, a, a single mom and I, I could tell that she really could use my help because she kept asking me questions. And I, I love, you know, I, I, I love encouraging people and helping them mm -hmm. just bring a positive aspect to their life. And, and yes. so all day, you know, I'm talking to her and, um, that night she, uh, driving home, uh, she, she was killed in a car wreck and, and, you know, that's just, that's one of the many examples of, we don't know if we're going to be given to tomorrow. And yeah. so many of us live the life of, okay, well, you know, when this day comes, then I'll do this and we wait for a huge event to yes. make us happy or make us feel fulfilled. We always put it out into the future. If I do this, then this will happen. It'll be that day, that time. And it, it's never an exterior experience person thing. It's, it's all in a mindset. And if yeah. you can tweak your mindset, it changes your whole quality of life. Everything, everything, everything. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, um, That's but it, it's something that if, if you don't have someone in your life that is even making aware of that, mm -hmm. you're just going to keep living the same mundane, mediocre life every single day. Yep. And, and, you know, I, I know a ton of people that, that follow me here on YouTube, um, that they think that <laughs> all I do is dance fitness. And in fact, <laughs> um, that's such a small portion of what I, it, I love dance and I will always do dance fitness until my body says I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it was probably when I got to Oklahoma, when I started to do videos, um, that are more than just the dance fitness videos yeah. that I talk to people. And, um, I, I've always preached positivity and, and tried to, to breathe air of goodness into other people, because mm -hmm. this world is so freaking negative. And yeah. I mean, just like, you have no idea, girl, Ugh, the dance fitness industry, it's full of a bunch of, not everyone, I won't say sure. that, but, sure. but the, the catty mean, it's the mean girl syndrome, but it's not just yeah. girls. It's, it's dudes too, yeah. uh, but it's mostly girls. I, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, just cattiness and competition. And, and you guys, I, I always tell people, look, if every single one of us were our absolute best, the world, the world is big enough to embrace us all at our best. Mm -hmm. And, and especially as females, why do we break each other down? There's because room at the top. Yes. Always. Amen. And, yeah. and, but you don't see this in the dance fitness world at all, supporting yeah. other people and saying, dude, you rock. You're awesome. It's well, she got that choreo from whatever. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares guys? Yeah. Um, so, so we're going to be talking about oh, all sorts of crazy stuff on this podcast, mm. but, um, the, the reason why ultimately I've wanted to do this podcast for almost two years now is because, um, my unique life experiences, um, give me perspective and understanding of a lot of things that, um, the, the average person doesn't have, but needs to hear. Yes. And, um, and I truly believe you don't, you don't have to have a certain level of education. You don't have to be a certain weight. No. You don't have to be in a certain area of the world to be your best self. So whether you're listening from New Zealand or I have, 
I don't know Dublin, about you. Ireland. Yeah, Dublin, Dublin Ireland. Mm-hmm, Dublin, Ireland. <laughs> um, Sarah Fox, she is uh, one of the biggest Fitz fans. Um, she's in Ireland. Two years in a row, she has sent me St. Patty's Day um, gifts. Yeah, Sweet. yeah. She, Easy, guys. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and um, and you know, it's uh, the the people that have been my ride or die people from the get go. I'm man, I'm so grateful for. And and the the reason for this podcast is to reach the masses because yeah. um, I, I definitely believe that you don't have to be in the dance fitness world to benefit from um from what I have to say. And yeah. I, I, I definitely, I don't take people's time for granted. I always want people to walk away from either a Lauren live or a fits and healthy podcast or whatever saying, Oh my gosh, you know, I, I do, I believe in myself or, yeah. or, okay. Knowledge that I can apply to my life or yeah. I don't know, but, but that's, that's the point. This is episode one. And, um, <laughs> you know, the, this is going to be, an adventure. It's going to develop into things that we can't even imagine. Yeah. Um, my, my goal, and of course, Symphony, you know this, but my goal is to, um, to have one long podcast that's anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour that's yeah. released, um, either every Monday or every Tuesday. I haven't decided yet. And then we're going to do Q and A because people are always asking me questions. I and- see a bunch of awesome questions in the live chat. Oh, if you yes. see me keep looking up, it's because I'm looking at all these questions. And I mean, we will totally yes. be here to answer those questions for you guys. We Sweet. really want to do Q and A's as much. Absolutely. As absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, Cynthia and I um, have been talking about how we want to um, do that because this right now, Robert is recording the audio for this and this will be put in basically made as episode one for the podcast. But right yeah. now, obviously we're live on YouTube yeah. and, and I haven't been reading any of the comments, but, um, but, Cynthia and I, will we do every episode live? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but, but I do know that, that we have a lot to talk about, like literally, um, just the, the first survey that we sent out, man, I don't even know how many people filled it out, but there were like all over the board of things that people want to hear talk about. So, so let's just, let's give them an overhaul of kind of some of the topics that we're going to be talking about. And this is just like literally touching the surface. Ratching the, yeah. Ratching, (laughs) ratching the surface. (laughs) I was scratching. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. So, so, um, hormones, hormones is Mm. a, a topic that so many specifically females. And here's the deal. Yeah. You dudes, you have hormones too. You, yeah. I, I, it, people always assume that when you talk about hormones, it's just talking to the females. No, um, yeah. you, you guys, your hormones affect you too. And so there's plenty of dudes that struggle with your weight as well, that I guarantee your hormones are out of whack too, yeah. for sure. Um, they're autoimmune disorders. And mm-hmm. of course I'm a medical doctor, but my my advice is not your medical advice. You yes. take it to your physician, but yeah. there are so many people that don't realize that their autoimmune disorder can be made. The symptoms can get better or if not go away completely mm-hmm. by making some changes. Yes. And I, when I was practicing medicine, so I, I did anesthesia, um, once a week in a pain clinic and so many of the pain clinic patients were autoimmune disorders or, or that, that could have been the reason that they were there, but a lot of them just had that in their past medical history. And as an anesthesiologist, I, when I pre-op a patient, I get to know their past medical and past surgical history. So the amount of autoimmune disorders. And what I mean by that is, um, thyroid problems like Graves, um, uh, Hashimoto's, um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, um, fibromyalgia, um, MS, um, like there are so many autoimmune disorders that we're not around decades ago, guys. Mm -hmm. And, and there's a reason for that. And, and if you don't know what you don't know, you're going to keep living this life, assuming that you have to be on meds the rest of your life. And I have helped so many people cut down, if not go completely off. I've got one chick who she is actually on my team, um, as a coach and she started out, I think she was on like six different asthma and allergy medicines. She is off every single one. Hey. Hi. Mm-hmm. And not to mention her son who has Asperger's, which is one of the autistic, um, he has autism, but not everyone that has autism has Asperger's. And we'll actually talk about that in an episode as well. But, um, he, his 
his state of his Asperger's has increased greatly to the point that he is now freaking in college. Like she said that his personality has totally changed. Yeah. Um, and this is by making changes to your lifestyle. It's mm-hmm. not because he was prescribed a certain magical pill. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that man, we've got so much to talk about on this you fits and healthy pod- <laughs> podcast. It's not even funny. And so, so, okay. So what we need everyone to do right now is that, um, if you're listening on YouTube live, you need to go to fits and healthy.com. So that's F I T Z A N D H E A l t h y.com yeah go get on the email list because you want to be notified about all of the good stuff right yeah. um and then if you are listening to this on podcast please subscribe to this like it not like it subscribe to it review it and then download all the episodes because we we plan um to have five episodes for you to download immediately on may 1st and um and i just I just want to say that I'm so excited about this podcast and yeah. being able to empower the people of all ages, all races, all ethnicities, um, to, to live life by design, ultimately yeah. to yeah. be more fit and healthy. Mm-hmm. Da, dum, dum. <laughs> <laughs> so have I forgotten anything, Symphony? I know that I, I talk a lot, but no, it's totally fine. Um, I'm, I'm not a physician myself, so I'm excited to be kind of the voice for you listeners and ask the questions that you would want to be able to ask her about the topics that we're going to talk about. So when we do Q and A's and stuff like that, ask the questions that you want answered. I'll be your voice and ask them for you. Um, but not, not only will we be covering, you know, medical and nutrition, but like she said, leading a life by design. And that's, it's so huge. Um, just teaching you things that we have implemented and seen huge changes. And like she said, having a mentor is huge and we both have the same mentor and she's amazing. And so what we want to do in this podcast is if if you don't have a mentor, we want to kind of step into that role and do everything we can to add value to your life, to teach you to lead a life by design and make decisions for yourself and not just leave it up to the universe. Amen. And, and no matter how old you are, cause there, there is nothing that makes me more sad than when I, I meet someone that is in my, my mom's generation that I, I know has just kind of given up on life and just assumes yeah. because they're whatever age that it's too late. And dude, it, I don't care if you're 21 or 71 yeah. today is the day to start making the life that you want. Yes. And obviously I would love to get a hold of young, young minds so that they can avoid some mistakes. Right. Um, like don't go to medical school. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, we'll still need doctors. Check. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I've, I've, there have been quite a few parents that have asked if I could speak to their kid because they want to go to medical school. And I'm always open and honest. I'm like, um, dude, I'm going to probably talk them out of it. You, you yeah. know that, right? And they're like, oh, then I don't want you to talk to them. <laughs> but, but that's the thing. I, I'm always brutally honest. And um, I'm for those of you that are on uh, YouTube that don't follow me on Facebook, um, my Facebook followers know that I, I'm known for Lauren Tough Love. I say it the way it is. I've got tough skin. You can, yeah. you can call me ugly. You can call me fat. You can call me stupid. I don't care because mm-hmm. I'm really secure in who I am. But when you mess with my people. That's where you get to see mama bear, mama bear, mama bear. (laughs) So, so that being said, anything else before we end this episode one? No, just know that you are not too young to care and you're not too old to try. Amen. Mm -hmm. Preach, preach. All right. Well, we appreciate every single person that has been on YouTube live with us and is listening to this podcast. Um, for Fits and Healthy episode one. Love you guys. And we are out. Make sure that you find us on social media. You can find Symphony on Instagram and Facebook at Symphony. So that's C-I-N-T-H-A-N-I-E. And on Snapchat at Symphony P. And find me on social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all at Club Fitz Fitness. Remember, that's F-I-T-Z Fitness. 
and on Snapchat, just at Club Fitz. I appreciate your time listening so much. If you enjoyed this episode of the Fits and Healthy podcast, can you please go do me a favor and go subscribe at whatever platform that it is that you listen to podcasts. Leave a review. We read every single review and we appreciate the time that you take to leave your thoughts and opinions. Now, also remember, while I am a medical doctor, the information I provide here is not intended to provide medical advice or a professional diagnosis, opinion, treatment, or services to you or to any other individual. I am providing general information for educational and informational purposes only, and it is not a substitute for medical or professional care. You should not use this information in place of a visit, call, consultation, or the advice of your physician or other healthcare provider. The information I share is not intended to treat, cure, or diagnose any disease or medical condition. If you believe you have a medical emergency, just call 911 immediately or your physician. Now, enough of that medical legal jargon. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I appreciate your time. Now go live a fit and healthy life.